Laura from Doggy U, and today I'm training go to place with this guide dog puppy cash that I picked up this morning. So we're gonna be showing you my full unedited training session so you can follow along and train your dog to go to place on cue. So let's get started. Teaching a go to place behavior can be incredibly useful for everything from guests coming to the house, to keeping your dog out from underfoot in the kitchen, to going to the vet, to teaching a strong stay behavior in the presence of lots of distractions. To teach this behavior, you'll need treats or your dog's meal. I'll be using Cash's lunch, a raised bed platform or cot that your dog can comfortably lie on. I'll link the one that I'm using here down in the description below, along with a couple other options, a treat pouch for your snacks, a marker word or clicker to mark the moment the dog does the behavior you want, as well as patience and a sense of humor. That's always good to have when you're training. Also note that I'll be training this in real time, so you'll get to see what I do when things don't go as planned. I'll be training it in four short mini sessions with the end result of a dog that can go to place on cue. I'll be sprinkling in training tips throughout the session, like why I always teach this on a raised cot when I start out instead of just a mat on the floor. So be sure to stick around to the end. All right, let's get to training. Hi everyone, I'm Laura from Doggy U, and today we're gonna to be working with this four month old German Shepherd teaching her to go to place using Shape It. So I'm gonna give her this little snuffle mat here while I chat with you for a second. So Cash, here. It's got a bunch of her little foods, uh, her regular kibble in it that she's gonna snack on while we chat. So go to place is a behavior where the dog is going to be able to go to a mat on cue. Go to place. Nice work. Oh, what a fabulous animal. Now we can absolutely do it with luring. So that's where I might bring the dog over to the mat, feed them on the mat, and reward. But I wanna show you what it looks like with shaping. Shaping is the process of reinforcing closer and closer approximations to a desired behavior. We break the behavior down into little pieces so that we're able to constantly tell the dog, yes, you're doing it right, just like that. The benefits of shaping are too many to list here, but the biggest ones are that shaping teaches a dog to initiate behavior and think independently, which is critically important for service dogs. Shaping is also dog-driven learning, so when the dog thinks it's their idea, they're much more likely to want to repeat that behavior. And finally, it builds confidence. When we tell dogs they're doing it right, it motivates them to want to learn and creates a positive association with learning and by extension, us, which is exactly what we want with our young dogs. Now I'm not going to add a cue to this behavior, so I'm not going to say go to place until I have a dog that's reliably going to place on their own. So they're reliably, as soon as I toss a cookie away, they eat it and they're running back to their place. So let's get started with that. Um, so I'm going to, she's got her little snuffle mat here, which she's excited about. I'm gonna toss some cookies over to the side. So I'm gonna show her the cookies. I'm gonna toss them over there for her. Pick up her snuffle mat. We might need to use it a little later for a break. All right, so I'm gonna start by just warming up my clicker. Now notice that my mat is not down yet. I'm only gonna put it down when we start training. So now I wanna warm up my clicker so that she knows that the clicker means something good's gonna happen. So she's over here playing with her toy. So I'm gonna go ahead and boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna scatter a couple kibbles on the floor. We're gonna take this distraction away for now and she can have it back later. All right, so I'm gonna click my clicker and give her a cookie, okay? So the clicker has nothing to do with what she's doing. The important part here is I click, then the reinforcement comes to her. What we don't want is to give the food and click at the same time. We want her to be able to learn that click marks the moment she does something right. So it's like taking a picture of the behavior that you want, and then the food's gonna come. So I'm gonna click, then reach my, my food, and give it to my dog. Now, I have a whole video on this, so I'll link that somewhere up here for you to check out. So again, click, and then food. All right, now let's get introducing our mat. So I'm gonna pull my mat out. I'm gonna take her leash off so she doesn't get it jangled up or anything like that while we're working. So we're gonna take the leash off. I'm gonna put the mat down and I'm gonna immediately get ready to click for any interaction she has with my mat. So I'm gonna put my mat down. So she goes to look at the mat. I'm gonna toss the cookie away. I put the mat between me and her because I know then it means that she's gonna have to go over the mat to get to me, so she's really likely to touch the mat or interact with the mat. So I'm gonna start by always throwing the cookie behind. Now she's already starting to put her feet on it, but all I care about now is does she reorient to the mat after she eats the food? So she eats the food, she turns back towards the mat, and I'm clicking for her just nosing the mat right now. I might even have to start with clicking for her just looking at the mat when I first start. I want her to understand that it's all about the object. Every time you come to this object, 
you're going to get marked and reinforced for it. Now I'm going to start waiting for her to put one foot on the mat. So my new clicking criteria is she puts one foot on the mat, she gets a click and a reward. So I wait for it, one click, cookie tosses away. Now me being able to toss the cookie away, what that does is allows her to reset. It allows her to go away and then come back and have lots of experience coming back towards the mat. There you go, she puts a foot on, she gets another cookie. So wait for her to come back again, and we'll mark and reward. One foot on, mark and reward. Once I get two feet on, I'm going to start rewarding on the mat. So she put two feet on, she actually put four, but my criteria was two. I'm going to feed a couple times on the mat, and then I'm going to say free. And I'm going to start building in that release word, because eventually we'll want to stay here too. So we get one foot, two foot, reward, reward. Reward. I'm only clicking for when she puts the two feet on the mat, and then I release, I say free, and toss the cookie away. And I wait for her to come back for another rep. So I'll wait, second foot goes on, I reward, 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 and she's choosing to lay down, I love that. I'm going to heavily reinforce that, this is the beginning of our staying on the mat. I try to stand up every time, so it doesn't look like, um, so it looks like what I eventually want, which is me to be able to stand up. Then I'm going to toss the food away, free. See, I'm building in that release work, because when we're doing a stay, we always want a release work. Now I'm going to wait for three feet. So I got my third foot on, I reinforced for that. Now notice I'm always reinforcing in the down between her paws. I'm always reinforcing on the mat. I want her to think this is a magic mat, and the food just appears between her paws. Beautiful girl, she's so fabulous. Then I say free and I toss the food away. And then I'm gonna wait for one more, I'm gonna click for four feet on the mat. So I wait for the four foot, awesome. I reinforce all four on the mat, super girl. And right after this, we're gonna go ahead and take a break from our training. So that's our first session. I just wanted to have a really good time, have a nice short training session, reinforced a ton on the mat. I'll tell her F-R-E-E, and then I will take the mat away so she doesn't get, like if she goes over to it while we're on a break, she doesn't not get reinforced for it. So I toss it away, I say free, and then I pull up the mat, and we'll go ahead and use that at another session. Nice job, girlfriend. That was so good. That was such a good girly. Yes, you were. Hey, y'all, if you think Cash is super cute, make sure you go down and boop that like button right now so I know that you want more training videos like this one. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, now Cash has had a little bit of a break. She's in her crate resting. I'm gonna pull her out of the crate and get ready for another training session. But before I do that, I wanna make sure I'm all set up. So I've got my treat bag with, my, uh, with her kibble in it. I've got my clicker with me and I've got my mat, which I'm ready to pull out and get right to business. So I'm gonna release her and then we'll get started. Free. So she comes out of the crate. I get my mat ready. I'm gonna start with a little setup kibble. So I'm gonna show her the kibble. I'm gonna to toss it over to the side here. I'm gonna set up her mat. And just like before, I'm just gonna click for sniffing it. But notice how quickly she goes back to doing what we were doing before, which is getting on the mat. So now I'm gonna go right to rewarding her in the down. So notice I clicked for four paws on. If your dog doesn't get it right away, you can start just like we did in session one with just reinforcing for a foot and then two feet, but she got it right away. So I'm gonna reinforce for that, and then I'm gonna say free, and I'm gonna to toss that cookie away. So I'm gonna click again for four feet. So I'm gonna wait, she gets on, fourth foot goes on, I reward in the down. So she obviously already knows a down, um, or else she wouldn't be you know, going into this position so easily. Um, again, I don't know this puppy very well. I just picked her up today and I had had one session when she was eight weeks old just doing some very foundational clicker work. So I'm gonna feed again and then tell her free and toss that cookie away. My goal is for her to run to the mat and lay down on her own eventually. So that's why I'm reinforcing in the down. But what I'm training is the going to the mat part. So that's what I'm going to click for. That's what I'm looking for. I reinforce in the position I want, but I click for her getting on the mat. Now, I'm gonna try something a little different here and we'll see how it goes, but I'm gonna toss the cookie slightly away in a different direction. So instead of it being between me, so it's like K 
kibble map me or dog map me. Now it's gonna be the kibble's over there. So it's a little bit harder for her to come back to the map. So we're gonna try that. So I'm gonna say free. I'm gonna toss my kibble out of screen under a chair, perfect. And then I'm gonna stand and stare at my map. Now she's getting a little distracted by the environment because I got a lot going on here. Ideally, we go in a sterile situation without lights everywhere, but she came right back, so I clicked for her and reinforce again. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna toss this cookie here for you, right here in front. She goes to get it, I stare at Matt, and she comes right back this time. I'm gonna reinforce for that because it's hard, <laughs> you all can't see in this environment, but I've got lights, climbs, an open closet with a lot of equipment that she is interested in. So her coming right back was really important to me. So I'm gonna click for that this time, lower my criteria. Then I'm gonna say free, and I'm gonna do it again. So cookie goes there, I stare at my mat, not at my dog. Boom, dog goes back on, love it. That's really, really nice. So I'm gonna do one more in this direction, and then I'm gonna kinda of work it around the clock a little bit. So I'm gonna say free. She goes for cookie, I stare at mat, she comes back, I wait for all four feet, and she, she grabbed a cookie there that was already on the mat. I want to see if she chooses to lay down. Oh my goodness, what a good girl. So she was already reinforced for coming back on the mat inadvertently because she missed a cookie there. So I'm gonna reinforce that, and now I'm gonna toss right here. So now she's having to pass me to get to the mat. So I'm gonna say free, I'm gonna toss my cookie here, and I'm gonna stare at my mat. Now, if I need to redirect her over here because I do have a lot going on in this space, I'll do that. Ideally, we want to use a totally, a space that's totally free of fun things. So, bop, bop, bop. there you go. So I'm going to stare at my mat. She goes on to it. I reinforce. And if this continues where she's distracted when I throw the cookie that way, what I can always do is I can put up a baby gate so there's no way of her getting over to the other parts of the room that might be distracting for her. I want to always think about how do I set my puppy up for success and how do I make it very easy for her to do the right thing. So I'm going to say free, I'm going to toss my cookie here. Now it's slightly behind me. She's getting distracted by her crate and now she's coming right back so I'm going to reinforce with that because that's really really hard for her to come back um, from all of this distraction. So I'm going to reinforce in that down position, good girl. Now I'm going to toss this way. This should make it free a little bit easier because there's less distractions over there. Nice, now she missed a cookie that was already on there. So I'm gonna reinforce in her down again. Super dupers, good job. I'm gonna wait for her to clean up those cookies so she doesn't have a cookie back on the mat again. There's one right between her paws on her chest here. There you go, baby girl. I'm gonna say free, and I'm gonna toss my cookie away again, and then I'm gonna stare at my mat and wait for her to go back on. Awesome! So she's getting the hang of it here. I'm going to end this session, so that was the whole session that I'm going to do for this round, and I'm going to toss a cookie that way so it's really easy for her to get it right again, end on a good note, free. She goes to get the cookie, she comes back to the mat, all four feet on, I click, I reinforce with my hand between her paws in that down position. Again, we're building that stay inherently by rewarding between the paws in the down and making sure that we use that release word so she knows when she's supposed to get up. So that's what tell our release word tells us and this is how we build a strong stay, just the beginnings of it. Then I say free, I toss the cookie away, get her all the way off, I pull the mat, and that's that session. All right, we're ready for our third session. So I'm gonna plop this down, wait for her to get all four feet on now that we've done that, good. And I'm gonna reinforce in that down again. Super duper. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue on with throwing the food past me so she has to go past me to get the thing. Now, she, got, oh, she went to go get her cookie, that's why she stood up, it was underneath her. I'm just gonna feed again in the down and then be the one that releases her. So I'm gonna say free, I'm gonna toss that cookie away. Now I'm gonna stay a little further back this time. As I start putting myself further from the mat, 
I'm gonna start clicking again just for front feet on so I can mark the moment she gets on the mat, which is what I'm looking for. Now you'll notice I used an elevated surface here and that's because it's very clear whether she's on or off the mat and when you elevate your dog, there's a choice point where they have to actually physically decide to step down versus just walk off the mat like a towel. So I really always start these in an elevated position if possible. So now I'm going to toss my cookie away free. I'm gonna move so we have a little more space in camera view. I'm gonna reward that in the down, and I'm gonna really quickly just tell her free. And I'm gonna step a little further back and see how we do. Good, so she's able to easily turn to me and go onto the mat. So I'm gonna reinforce for that. And this time I'm gonna step even further away, free. So I toss my cookie away. I stare at my mat, not at my dog. She immediately goes to it because we're really magnetizing her to this spot. It's really, really, really lovely. Love it. Feed her in position, tell her free. Toss the food away. Stand here, stare at the mat. Look at my dog, she's like a little magnet. So now, this is where I can predictably add a cue. So when we think about our go to place cue, I like to do two things. I like to use the word go to place, or several words I suppose, and then I also will use a pointing cue sometimes too. So dogs are, in my environment, there's a lot of things a dog could go to place on. So I think it's very helpful to have a physical cue along with our verbal cue. So we're gonna start adding that first. So I'm gonna say free, and I'm gonna get real close so she can't make a mistake, and I'm gonna point to the thing. Now she didn't even see me pointing here, but I'm going to, yeah. So now we've got a dog that's also choosing to lay right down. Love that. What a good potato. Yeah, you are. You're such a good girl. Say free, toss my food away, get close. I point, go to place. She goes to place, I reward. Super duper, good girl. And remember, they'll always watch your physical body more than they'll listen to your words. Uh, and you wanna separate the two. So if my goal was to teach her the word first, I would need to say the word and then go to play and then point. So it looks like this, so be free. Because they're always gonna watch your body. So it should be go to place, step, look, point, dog gets on, reinforce. Now I'm just using her lunch kibble here. So, um, you know, the food she would have been fed anyway so that she gets lots of reinforcement. I'm getting a lot of value out of that food. Free, toss my food away. I say, go to place, step, look, point. Dog goes to place, I reinforce. Good job. And I'll probably just do one more of these and uh, that'll be it for this session. Good job. Free. Go to place. Nice work. Oh, what a fabulous animal. And you see how it looks very seamless. I am purposely setting her up to be successful. I am not trying to make her fail. I'm trying to make her succeed and she's doing a fantastic job. And we just level up each little piece just by a small amount each time. Now, if she makes a lot of mistakes, like two in a row, what I know from that is that she is not understanding what I'm asking, so I need to go back a step and help her understand what I'm asking. You'll see that I'm feeding a lot. People are gonna be like, oh my God, you're feeding her so much. Yeah, and I'm getting quick results because she knows, oh, all the good stuff is here on the mat. If I just stay laying down here on the mat, that food is gonna be delivered to me room service style right between my paws. Perfect, that's what we want. And then I tell her free, I toss my cookie away, I pick up my mat, and that's the end of session three. Good job, girlfriend. Aren't you the most fabulous animal? Where's your popcorn toy? Did you get your popcorn toy? Let's go get that popcorn toy. Let's go get that popcorn toy. Yeah! All right, so Miss Cash here has had a little bit of a snoozle. She's ready for one more session before we have to return her to her mom. So I'm gonna put my placemat down. We're gonna work on getting her to down without needing. So we're gonna delay our click until she chooses to lay down. So she chooses to lay down there. I'm gonna reinforce. So I'm gonna just do a couple reps where I'm waiting for her to lay down before I click. So I say free. Now I can always help her into that down if I need to using a hand cue. She goes there, she lays down. I click and reinforce. We'll do one more rep like that, where I'm just re waiting, holding out my click until she lays into that down position, because that's ultimately the picture that I want for my go to place. 
I say free. We're gonna do that one more time. Wait for her to get on. We get some nice speed back to our cot. Nice work, she lays down. Okay, so now we've got a dog that's laying down. Now we're gonna start working on our distance again. So I'm gonna say free, toss my cookie away, move away from the mat, stare at my mat, go to place, and then wait for her to down. That's her click, there we go. So I go to her feet between her paws, that's really important. I tell her free, I fold the food away so she sees it. I stare as I go to place, step look point, wait for the down. Beautiful girl, awesome. I'm gonna back the mat up just a little bit. Let's see if we can, if you're still gonna be able to see her if I do that. Let me just uh, tilt it a little towards her. There we go. All right, so she waited there on, on her mat. I'm gonna reinforce in that down position. She didn't break, which is awesome. I tell her free, even with me being distracted by talking to you. I'm gonna say, go to place, step look point. Dog goes to place, wait for that down behavior. Now she doesn't automatically down. I give her that down cue. That's where I click, okay? Now, if she continues not to lay down all the way, that means that I need to go back and do a little bit more reinforcing for getting into that down position, because she's telling me she didn't totally understand that concept. Cash, go to place, step look point, waiting for that down, that's a beautiful thing. And now we're gonna do one more from a little further away and then we're gonna call that end of day session. Free, so I put my food here. I tell her, cash, go to place, step look point. She gets on, she lays down. Isn't that a fabulous animal? All right, so that's it for Cash and I today, but if you want to progress this behavior, you're going to want to add distance and distraction in the room you're currently in, and then take it to different rooms of your house. You're also going to want to practice your stay on the mat. Now, if you've never learned how to teach a stay or you need help refining it, I want you to go over to doggyu.com because I'm thinking of either doing a mini course or another video, and the best way to get notified about that is to go to doggyu.com and sign up for my free newsletter. Also, if you enjoyed these totally uncut training sessions so you can see exactly what I do to teach a new behavior, make sure you let me know down in the comments below so I know if you want me to make more of these. You'll also wanna join the Doggy U community at patreon.com slash doggyu, where there's over 125 videos just like this one to show you how to train your dog. I've got both pet and service dog content over there. You can join for as little as $3. I can't wait to see you at our next live stream. And if you're looking to do some more training with your dog, check out this video here. Go ahead and click on it right now. You all have an awesome day and happy training.